Excellencies, distinguished guests, thank you for inviting me to speak with you today on the occasion of the launch of the UN Interagency Women's Leadership Program. Women in Diplomacy, the leading role of women in weather and climate contexts. I want to extend my thanks to UNITA, the World Meteorological Organization, the UNFCCC Secretariat, and other partners for their leadership in the development of this important program, which is designed to strengthen women's leadership, both within governments and the UN system. UN Women is privileged to be a partner of this program and is committed to supporting the concrete steps to contribute to strengthening the engagement of women and their full and equal participation in all climate change contexts, including in negotiating outcomes, implementing actions, monitoring, and holding governments accountable to their commitments. The launch of this program comes at a most opportune time, I would say historic time, as we approach the finalization of the Sustainable Development Goals and a 2015 Climate Change Agreement, we are looking forward to new commitments for people and planet, a world that works for all women and men. Earlier this year, in the context of the 20-year review of the Beijing Platform for Action, member states committed at the Commission on the Status of Women to work towards the full effective and accelerated implementation of the platform for action across all of its 12 critical areas of concern, including women in power and decision making. The platform serves as the blueprint for transformative approaches to achieve gender equality and the empowerment of women in the post-2015 development agenda and related processes. For you and women, Women's leadership and agency in decision-making on climate change action has been a key priority since its creation. We have been also active in supporting and highlighting the role of women as agents of change in the responses to climate change, the environment, and disasters at all levels. In 2012, UN Women organized the Women Leaders Summit at the Rio Plus 20 conference, which brought together women heads of government and state who pledged their support and urged government, civil society, and the private sector to prioritize gender equality and women's empowerment in the sustainable development agenda and accelerate actions for its implementation. The following year, UN Women contributed to the debate on how to implement the decision taken by the parties to the UNFCCC at COP18 on improving women's participation in the UNFCCC negotiations by preparing a study with the Mary Robinson Foundation on strategies to improve women's participation in achieving gender balance. Last year, in 2014, during the UN Secretary General's Climate Summit in New York, UN Women, in collaboration again with the Mary Robinson Foundation, convened a meeting of women leaders from around the globe who raised the ambition for climate action. Our advocacy has resulted in positioning gender equality issues as part of the official agenda of the COPs. Just last year at COP20, parties adopted the two-year Lima work program on gender with action-oriented mandates spanning the elaboration of gender equality linkages across the thematic areas discussed in the UNFCCC context. So why is this new program relevant? Women have repeatedly proven to be effective agents of change as reflected in their knowledge of sustainable natural resources management, in their leadership at the household, community, national and global levels to respond to and find common solutions to climate and weather related crises. Yet women remain significantly underrepresented in decision making at all levels and in all spheres, from households to local governments, planning and development structures, service delivery organizations, national parliaments, executive governments, and global governance institutions too. Women continue to face barriers in the form of institutional and structural constraints, be it in terms of access to resources, absence of property and inheritance rights, lack of access to knowledge and information, 
or to training and skills development or capacity building. And sociocultural stereotypes continue to perpetuate the idea that women should not have a role in public life. This is why this interagency women's leadership program led by UNITAR is so very important. Women as agents of change in their own right will benefit from and enhance technical expertise in fields like climate and weather services where women are still the minority in decision making processes. The inclusion of women in decision making is a matter of human rights, justice and equality, but it also would contribute enormously to the effectiveness of whatever we do. International human rights norms are very clear about how the right to participation, the principles of equality and non-discrimination should play out. In addition, the active presence of women has also been shown to improve institutions because it ensures gender specific concerns are included on the agenda and encourages the monitoring of the implementation of related policies and programs. Examples from across the world show that where the increased participation of women in decision making led to legislation targeting the gaps in access to health and education, increasing access to finance, land and inheritance rights, and unpaid care work to name just a few of the issues that undermine women's rights and prevent their full engagement as citizens. Other examples from India and Nepal have demonstrated the increasing effectiveness of policies on forest management where women's leadership was incorporated. Once the inclusion of women had reached critical mass, there was a fall in logging and illegal forest activities. The launch of the women's leadership program will go a significant way towards building capacity to work towards institutional transformation, to ensuring a much needed mainstreaming of gender perspectives into national policies, action plans, and other measures on climate and weather based on systematic gender analysis. The program also provides an opportunity for the participants to mentor others and to build alliance and mentorship is really important and to build alliances amongst different stakeholders, governments, UN system, civil society, women and men and citizens who can work together for the achievement of gender equality. On behalf of UN Women, I once again congratulate UNITA for its leadership in launching this program. You and women will be actively supporting your implementation. You can count on it. I thank you.